732, everybody, and it is presidential primary day across New York. And while Democrats outnumber Republicans nearly three to one, there are still some pockets of the state where Republicans could gain some momentum here. Yes, we've invited political analyst Morgan Peckman to join us this morning and weigh in on these issues. Good morning, Morgan. Thank you so much for being here. You know, we've got to talk about what's happening in the state in the current state of affairs. We are seeing some areas of the state, which is predominantly blue, turn red. Really? Well, in the Hudson Valley and in uh, Long Island in the last two years, uh, there was a shift in the congressional delegation. But that happens oftentimes in off years and in presidential years. Generally, the state roars back to blue. And uh, the voter registration, as you're saying, is so dominant mm. in favor of Democrats. We haven't had a Republican elected statewide since Governor George Pataki. Yeah. Let's talk about what's playing out today, right? We have the presidential primaries. But both President Biden and former President Trump have both clinched their nominations. They have enough delegates, right? So what is the point? of today's primary? Um, there really is no point. It's extremely anticlimactic. There was a lawsuit brought by Andrew Yang a few years ago that said, even if we've decided the delegate, we mm -hmm. still need to go and vote. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, it's your civic duty, but we, we're going to have no impact on deciding who is the presidential nominee. But there are other things on the ballot today. No, it's just the presidential primary. So do you think this is going to be a heavy turnout? Plus, we got rain on top of it. Yeah. Um, I, it seems like a waste of money. I, it, it does seem like a waste of money but at the same time you know this is an exercise that you know New Yorkers should be able to weigh in on the presidential mm -hmm. race otherwise we would have no say all right well in the last week we've seen former President uh, Trump as well as President Biden hold big fundraisers here in New York President Trump making a stop in Long Island at a funeral of a cop uh, which both seemed like stumping stumping grounds. How much money did President Biden make, and did that help his campaign? Uh, the the Radio City Music Hall uh, fundraiser with the three living Democratic presidents mm -hmm. raised twenty six million dollars. Uh, President Trump is going to try to beat that record setting total uh, this week in Florida with the fundraiser he hopes will raise. $33 million. President Trump right now lags heavily in fundraising uh, to President Biden. Uh, but, you know, there's going to be countless money raised until then, uh, before November. Yeah, let me be very clear. So you go to the ballot today, there's only one option to choose the, either president. Uh, no, you can vote for. You know, Democrats will be able to vote for Dean Phillips or Marianne Williamson. Uh, right, I'm saying, you know, just the presidential. There's no like delegate votes. Right, or this is else. the presidential primary. Today. Okay, so there's nothing else on the ballot whatsoever. Yes. All right, let's get your insight right now, moving from national to more local. What's playing out in Albany, of course, big budget talks happening right now. The budget is so interesting because a lot of the sausage gets made behind these closed door meetings, right? And you don't really know what's happening behind the closed doors. There's a lot of talk about crime, changing the laws. Do you think or foresee that actually happening, that Democrats might cave to the pressure of what's happening on the streets of New York City? Well, Kathy Hochul has really tried to frame herself as a tough on crime Democrat. Um, there's certainly a lot of pushback from the progressive state legislature. I really don't think that that's what's holding up the budget right now. I think it's more about tenant protections and expanding a, a tax break for developers called 421A. Uh, but, you know, we used to have late budgets on a regular basis. 20 years ago, the budget was 133 days late. Mm -hmm. uh, Andrew Cuomo consistently was trying to churn out on-time budgets, and now Kathy Hochul has failed to have one on-time budget. So the big second point is bail reform? What, what is it? Uh, no, it's probably housing. Okay. Uh, also, um, the Medicaid reimbursement and the education funding formula. So how do you see that actually playing out then, right? Because she wants one thing, the Albany legislators want another thing. The mayor wants something else. Uh, I mean, legislature. The legislature is all about compromise. The governor is going to have to find a way to, uh, you know, to be able to bridge that divide. And I think that the legislature seems that they're close to being able to nail down a budget deal. We may see that as soon as this week. And okay. migrants haven't played a part in any of that. The housing migrants, or I mean, funding for the migrant crisis is really going to have to come from the federal government. At the end of the day, that's not determined in Albany. And the mayor, although we think of him as a very powerful individual here in New York City, uh, has very little uh, juice in, in Albany, which is very frustrating for the New York mayor. Mm -hmm. uh, but the governor and the state, le the the heads of the state legislature, are really the proverbial three men in a room, although one of them is a woman, who makes the, the sausage behind, you know, the, the closed doors, as, as Dan was alluding to. 
There's a lot of talk, though, about mayoral control of schools and, what, and taking away mayoral control of schools. It sounds like they're not going to give them what exactly what the mayor wants, which is four years. Uh, the mayor uh, has, or New York City mayors, since mayoral control of schools came back into play, has often tried to include that in the budget. And the legislature tends to like to negotiate that separately so it's not a sticking point mm -hmm. uh, in these negotiations. And I imagine it's going to be the same way this year. Uh, in, in these budget negotiations. Right. We'll see how all that plays out. Morgan, yeah. always good to have you here. Such and a good pleasure. to talk to you. Good